Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Koi Bookworm Plays with Yarn podcast. I'm Hannah, and I'm a Jersey girl living in Liverpool, England, and I'm here to talk about knitting. So, it's episode six now, which, well, oh my gosh, it's episode six. I can't believe six weeks have gone by since I've started this. Um, this week has been kind of rough. It's I'll talk about it more at the end, but um, I don't, I like simultaneously don't have that much to show, but also a lot. Um, so for the first item that I will show you is a hoe or a half finished object. Um, it is the Ulichveld, which I can sort of pronounce now because I paid attention to when Ellie said it. Um, it's the Ulichveld uh, Mystery Knit Along Mitten. Um, so I have the first one done, including the thumb. And I love it. It fits really well. Um, ugh. I haven't weaved in some of the ends yet, so they're getting tangled. But it fits very well. And I'm pretty happy with my floats this time around. I restarted the cup. Well, for this one, it was the second one. I was trying to do them congruently or concurrently because I didn't want to fall behind and have second mitten syndrome. But my first cuff was horrible. My floats were so tight and it was so bunchy. And the edges where I um, have the magic loop occurring were super lumpy. And so I redid it and I'm much happier with it. My edges are still a little bit... Um, bumpy where the magic loop occurs, but it's not as bad. Um, I think probably the worst part is right here um, by the cat's tail and then up here at the top where I started decreasing, um, mostly because I, I messed up the decreasing originally and I was just like, I'm just going to finish it. Um, <clears throat> I did better on the thumb when I did that. And I've got no holes when I picked up the thumb Gus, um, the stitches from the thumb gusset, um, and I'm pretty happy about that because it was it's my first time doing a mitten, um, but I'm happy it's a half finished object. Just have to weave the ends in and get the other one done, and then I can wear them, which is good because it's been snowing. Um, it's not sticking because it's Liverpool. Um, and it's the city and yada yada, but it's been on and off snowing, sleeting, raining, snowing, hailing, sleeting, raining, and just all day. And so I need to finish these to keep my hands warm because the gloves I have, they work, but not as well. I think these will be much better. Um, and it's done in West Yorkshire Spinners um, Essential DK, the Air Valley one, and it's in their a blue and a white. I don't think they have colorway names, it's just numbers. Um, so blue and a white. And I have the cuff done and the mitten, the main part of the mitten started for the next one. I did this pretty much all day. Um, well, not all day on Thursday. I spent Thursday afternoon, evening doing this because I, I messed up some deadlines for school. I thought that one of my assignments was due on the 12th of December and not the 6th of December. And um, so I spent quite a few frantic days trying to get everything done for Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday because I had a presentation on Tuesday, one assignment due on Wednesday, and then another assignment due on Thursday. And so after that assignment was handed in at 2 o'clock, I was just like, I'm done. I'm done. I'm not doing anything. I'm just going to knit. 
and that's what I did. So I managed to get the um, cuff done for this. And again, I, I can't figure out the floats on the edge. It's not as bad. And I think this, this one looks kind of bad right now, but I think if I block it, it'll be okay because when I stretch it out that way, it looks fine. But um, I have such a problem with that, I don't know why. If anyone has suggestions, please tell me. Um, <clears throat> sorry for the scratchy voice. I don't know why it's that way. Um, also, <laughs> I did my Latvian um, braid up here backwards. I didn't realize that I thought I was doing it the right way, but I wasn't paying attention, I guess. And so when I started the second half of the Latvian braid, it was like not working out. And I was like, what is going on? And so I looked at it closer and realized that I did the first row. Um, instead of having the um, two colors going like that way, I had them going that way. And so I had to switch the other way for the top row. So it doesn't match either of them. But that's okay. It's my own little me, I guess, in my minin. I don't know excuses. Um, I really like this pattern. It knits up really quickly. Um, and I'm, I'm pretty much, I'm a slow knitter. I will admit that I take forever with things like one of my first shawl projects I literally worked on for a whole year. Um, so I, I'm amazed that I was able to do this. I actually finished it within the, like, not time limit, but within each of the clues coming out. Um, I had fallen behind, but I, when the fourth clue came out, I was ready for the thumb. And so, which was the fourth or fifth clue? The last clue, I can't remember. I know last week I said that this was, this whole part was the second clue, but it was, that's the second clue, and then this was the third fourth, fifth, yeah, fifth clue, okay, counting, all right, this is what I went to college for, not being able to count, cool, but, <clears throat> um, so yeah, I was actually, like, I think if I hadn't messed up with the first one and frogged it, I would be finished by now, or at least on one finished and then just needing to do the thumb of another, but, I had to frog it, and I fell behind and caught up again, sort of. But uh, the knit along, the actual knit along, and not just the clues coming out, um, doesn't end until the end of the year. So I have time to finish this, and I'll definitely get them in. Um, which I'm really grateful for Ellie for doing, because um, it being the end of the semester, I would not have uh, been able to get this done in in for the knit along if she had it close with the clues coming out. Um, so that is my mittens and I'm happy with them. I'm excited to try wearing them because I don't really do mittens. I find that having that much space around my fingers feels weird to me. Um, but I, I enjoyed knitting them, which I think is mostly the main reason um, for them. But um, we'll see how I feel wearing them. The next project that I, work, I worked on this week, um, I forgot to put a progress keeper in last time I showed it to you. And so there, um, I'm sorry about that, but uh, I, was, I really only had an inch. I was like here. And I finished the brim, and I'm now working on the main part of the hat. This is the sock head hat, um, and the yarn is Volen Vine Yarns. This is the Volca base in the colorway Dead Calm, and this is the Footsie base in the colorway Outlander. This is a commission trade beanie with my friend who is going to be creating um, kind of like a logo thing for me for this podcast and she sent me some of her uh, like 
preliminary sketches and they are so cute I couldn't she sent me three and she was like choose which one you like the best I was sitting there I was like I can't choose why um because they are just so freaking cute and I'm really excited um I did sit there for a while choosing debating between two because one of them I really really liked and I really wanted it but um I wanted something, because this is the Plays with the Yarn podcast, I wanted something a little more playful. And the one that I was really drawn to, um, it looks like the cat, like a cat is um, playing with something, but is a little bit hesitant about it. And it's like, what is this? Um, and I wanted something a little more playful. Um, and so I went with the more playful one, essentially. But they're really cute, and I'm really excited to see um, how it evolves. And I worked on this mostly during presentations, because on Tuesday I was at uni from 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. Um, and 9 to 5 was literally spent in a classroom watching presentations. Um, and only doing a six-minute presentation myself. So, uh, because nobody else had laptops out or notes or anything, because we didn't have to take notes or anything for this class, I brought my knitting and I pulled it out and just sat there and knit, because I would not have been able to pay attention if I didn't do that. <laughs> um, so, yeah. I have used up all of this. There's not even enough left to go all the way around, um, which is nice because I don't, I'm trying to use up my leftovers, um, I think there will be enough of this, there should be plenty of this, um, but yeah, and I will add a pom-pom at the top, probably in this one, I if there's not enough, I might do the sparkly one, but I have to ask my friend if she's okay with that. Um, <clears throat> now on to additions to the hoard. Um, so the first one is, it's not super knitting related, but um, I had a 10 pound voucher for um, Klaas Olsen because they have like a rewards thing and most of what's in my flat for organization purposes is from Klaus Olsen. And so um, I went in there looking for some extra Christmas lights and for some other bits. And they had like a, they have this Christmas deal going on that's like three for two. Um, and so I bought a tin, just this really cute little Christmas tin. And I'm keeping my, um, <clears throat> at the moment, it's small enough, my Cozy Memories blanket. And then whatever yarn I need to put into the blanket is going to go in here. I'm going to try to collect more pieces of yarn um, to just fill it up. And then I can sit and just do multiple squares at a time instead of doing one and then waiting ages until I have more yarn and then doing another. So that's my tin. I'm happy with it. <clears throat> the next edition I'm super excited about. So when I went to Nottingham Yarn Expo, one of the things that I had wanted to buy at the expo was a knitting project bag because I don't have any knitting projects project bags. Um, pretty much all my projects that I'm working on either live in Ziploc bags or in this tote bag. And while this is great because it has a lot of room and I can fit a lot of stuff in it, uh, things get tangled, things get unraveled because um, this is too much and it gets rattled around. <clears throat> and But I got overwhelmed at Nottingham Yarn Expo. I will admit that. I was just first time there, didn't know what to expect, and I didn't go and wander around and look at everything and then go around a second time and buy stuff. 
Um, I just kind of like fought as I was looking. Um, because I, what I had done was I had made a list before I went. Um, I looked at who was vending and I went to their websites to look at what they were selling and if there was anything that like screamed at me saying, hey, I, I want this, you, you need to buy me. Um, and so, but some people either don't have a website where they have their main colorways that they um, sell all the time, but like no listings. And then some people, because they were prepping for the expo, had on Etsy, like, Etsy store is closed until X date because we're prepping for this expo, um, and then no listings. So I couldn't really see what they were selling. Um, and one of those um, that I can actually remember that was the company Down Sheepy Lane. And I found them at the very end of the expo, and they had the knit knitting project bag that I wanted, and I couldn't buy it because I had no money. Um, and so I said, well, I'll keep you guys in mind. I'm going to take your card, and then when I get paid, I will um, purchase from you. And so that's what I did. I got paid last uh, at the beginning of this week, and I'm actually amazed at how fast this came, because on Thursday, I sent her a message saying, hey, uh, I'd like to order this, can you put up a listing? Um, and she did, um, because the week before I had asked if she had any, um, when next she would have project bags in stock, because on her Etsy she didn't have any. And she was like, oh, I have leftover from the expo. Which one were you thinking of? Um, and I can put up a custom listing. I was like, oh, I can't buy it today. I was just, because I thought like, oh, it'd be like a week or so until she had the listings or until she had the stock. And this is getting really rambly. I'm sorry. But I, um, so finally I was like, hey, I can buy it. And she popped it up on her website. And this is the bag. It's so cute. It's her small project bag. And it has little handles. Sorry, I haven't ta uh, taken the tag off yet because I wanted to show you guys. Um, but the listing went up on Thursday. Friday morning, I woke up to the email saying that it's been shipped. And then last night after the pub quiz, I came home and I found this sitting uh, in front of my door. So it, it literally came in less than a day, um, which is amazing. But um, it's really cute. It's got a draw, um, drawstring, I think it's called that, drawstring. So the little um, plastic squidge thing to hold it shut. And there's quite a bit of room, even though this is a small one. Um, I put my mitten project in here um, earlier today to see what the size is and it fits comfortably though I don't know how comfortably it would have fit if I didn't have one of the mittens already made, um, made up um, and then on the inside it's got the same lining from the handles and four ah, I'm trying to show you four little pockets to put notions and other things that you might need for. Um, oh, sorry, it's three. It's one big, no, it is four. Sorry, I thought it was one big pocket, but it's it's four little pockets. Um, sorry, my hair is stuck in my lip. Stuck. Okay. Um, which is nice, because like, I can fit, let me, I can fit my little like stitch marker thing into the pocket. It's gonna fall out now, but we're not gonna be able to show you it. There you go. It fits really nicely. I'm super happy with this. I've barely even used it and I'm happy with it. And the pattern's so cute. 
It's these little sheep with crowns and neckties. And I love it. I love that they're like, um, little shirts match the handle. It's so cute. But, so, um, I had met, mentioned to Debbie of Down Sheep Be Lane. Um, oh, sorry, what else comes? She sent this, like, little packet, and I totally ripped it open. Um, that had two little candies. A tea, which smells amazing, and a little Jingle Bell stitch marker on her card. So that is definitely backwards. I don't know how I can fix that. But um, I will put her information, uh, a link to her website um, in the down box. But I had mentioned to her when I bought it that I was going to speak about it in my podcast because I think that's polite to do just to let people know that, like, you're going to talk about an item that they have um, that you've purchased from them in your podcast or something um, so that, A, they can go check it out and see what you have to say about it, and B, so that... um, they can tell people like, oh yeah, like my product has been um, spoken about on these podcasts and this, if you are nervous about ordering, you can go look at what they have to say about it. Um, and Debbie was so kind to give, um, to send along with that something for a giveaway. Um, and I'm just amazed because I'm only on episode six and I'm already having a giveaway. Um, So sorry for the crinkling and I'm not sure how the glare is going to work with this because I'm going to leave it in the plastic so it stays nice. Um, But this is what she has sent. A skein of yarn and this is her Glimmer sock base. It's 75% merino, 20% nylon, and 5% gold stellina. And it's a 100 gram skein with 400 meters to it. And this is a one of a, sorry, I'm like reading it. It's really tiny and I have bad eyesight. Um, And this is a one of a kind colorway. And she has called it winterberry. And it is beautiful um my the lighting is not picking it up very well but it's these like tones of pastel-y bluey green and bluey purple um and it's really pretty and she sent chocolates tea and a stitch marker um along with it so for the giveaway since i don't have that many followers on here on or at least when i look at my numbers um i don't have that many subscribers i don't know um i don't know how many people watch consistently without subscribing um so what i'm going to do is i'm going to set up a ravelry group page um for this podcast and then i will put a post in there for the giveaway and you'll have to answer a prompt um no chatter just one post from everyone who wants to enter and um so i'll have a prompt and you'll comment there and i'll do a random number generator and the reason i want to do it on ravelry is there's two two main reasons. One is I want to make sure that it's this goes to a knitter um, and to I like that Ravelry numbers the posts and so I think it makes it a lot easier to do a giveaway that way. Um, I will announce it on my Instagram as well just because I definitely have more followers on my Instagram than I do here at the moment. Um, 
And so I just want to get on. I want to get it out to as many people as I possibly can, um, and I know that it won't do so, I don't want to say it won't do so well, um, th just through YouTube, um, but because I am still a new podcaster, I don't have, I don't have the base on YouTube, I have a much larger base on Instagram, um, and so I'm going to try to pull some people there. And I want it to be fair. I don't want it to be like five, just five people. So um, especially if those five people are like people I know personally because I've told them, hey, go do this. Um, I want it to be fair, you know. So I will send this. I will do international. Um, so you can, wherever you are, you can... Um, enter and I will announce it. I might, I might do two weeks. Um, I'm going to see how it goes and if it's really popular within a week then I'll shut it within a week but if it's not so popular within a week I'll keep it open a little bit longer. So one to two weeks I'll do it and I'll announce the winner here and yeah. Um, that's it for Stash, um, additions to the Horde, and Whips, and Almost Finished Objects, um, yeah, just, it's been a rough week for me, uh, a little bit of a personal aside, um, I lost my cat, um, I found out on Sunday of, this past Sunday, and then, that on top of all of the assignments that I had to, I, I just kind of like, yeah, it's been, it's been a hard week. <laughs> it's just, it, today's like my first day where I'm like able to just kind of like be off and like chill and um, process everything that's happened because I've had to just kind of, on Sunday when I found out I was at work and then I came home from work and I just sat on my floor and ate pizza and didn't do anything else. Um, and then I had to like just kind of squish it down and get my work done and go to work and go to school and continue with life, essentially. Um, and so now today I have, a, I have time to just kind of crumble a little bit is what I've been saying, um, which is yeah, um, so it's just a rough week, rough week, but, um, it, term hasn't officially ended, um, that's like the 18th, but I am pretty much done for the day, uh, for, with assignments and stuff, so I'm happy, <laughs> I can breathe, um, and all that, um, Oh, book suggestion! I forgot to bring it over here. It's all the way over there. In the kitchen. Because it's not a story book that I'm going to suggest. Um, I'm going to go grab that. Okay, so um, it's not a story kind of book. So then I'm going to suggest it's a cookbook. It's this cookbook. It's One Pound Meals. Fast and Fresh by Miguel Bar Barclays. Yeah, Miguel Barclays. Um, I will freely admit it, I hate cooking. Um, I hate cooking for myself. I don't mind cooking for friends and um, like family, like groups of people, I don't mind. Um, but if it's just myself, I really don't like doing it. Um, and so what I like about this book is all of the recipes are single serve. Because part of the problem that I have is I have, so there's like six of us, um, five to six of us in my family, depending on how many people are home and whatnot. Um, and so I, I'm used to, if I am helping with dinner or whatnot, I'm used to making just a lot of food. And so I don't know how to make food for just one person. But 
all the recipes in this are sing like for a single serving and if you are making it for more people you can just double or triple the ingredients um and they have a lot of really good recipes i've done quite a few from here um trying to find the one that i really liked um where is it oh there it is trying to show it without the recipe showing but this was a brussels sprout uh blue cheese risotto um and it was really tasty and i really liked it and one of the things that like although i've not made a most of the book i've taken things from the book that i've learned like i don't need to do a separate pot of rice if i want to make something with rice i can cook like the meat and then some of the veg and then toss the rice in and then pour water on top of it and it'll cook really well um and stuff like that and so i've done different like different variations of the recipe um so yeah i think the only issue with that book right now at least right now is that it's more summer recipes so it has a lot of really fresh veg and a lot of um cool like cold foods and because it's middle of winter and it's snowing and sleeting and cold I want like robust like roasts and stews and hot warm foods and not like summer foods um so I haven't made much from it lately because I'm like I just want warm food but yeah so that is all for today. Um, sorry that this has gone up on Saturday. Again, week was rough. It was busy, and it's the only time that I had to do it. Um, so I hope you guys have a good weekend, and happy knitting!